going? It's another video. I wanted to get this up a couple days ago, but reasons that will be described later. Anyways, uh, today got the lift working. It is fully functional. It's been working now for a few days. Actually, did I get it fixed before the live stream? I don't remember. It's been a while. Been busy working on stuff, but got a few interesting things today. Talk about the lift. Go visit with some friends. I think we go to a Goodwill. Uh, don't pay attention to that thing back there. You can't see that yet. Uh, it's later on in the video. But uh, anyways, here you go. Random stuff from the last few days. By the way, we're going to jump right into the lift repair. I didn't film a lot of my thought process or design or layout or anything. It wound up being this whole big thing, spending multiple hours trying to figure out how stuff was going to work and all that. I just needed to get it done. I was getting frustrated and I needed it to be fixed. So I grabbed the camera and started filming kind of near the end of the project, right as I was about to actually plug everything and test it. So here we go. Well, we're back out here working on the lift again. I pulled the controller out and I think I'm about ready to test my bypass circuitry. Ta-da! So here's our controller. What I've done is pulled out the two relays for the stow and deploy. And I've also pulled out a couple of power leads. So we have positive and negative. And then over here, we have the two wires that would normally be the output to that motor right there. See the white and black wires? So that's what we've got coming out right here, basically. And what I've done since the box mounts right there and it slides six feet back into a hole that I can't reach, I've gone ahead and used one of these wireless modules. And we're powering it off the same feed. And we've got our reversing relays wired up here. Probably should have tested those first, but what I'm gonna do is connect all this up and pull the wires off of the carriage motor, power it up and see what happens. The only trick is this thing installs in here like this upside down. We do have a little bit of clearance, but not much. So I'm gonna have to put the lid back on this box and tie everything up, but I gotta program the remote first. I think what I'm gonna do is try and do that now. And yeah, yep, there we go. Another brand new remote and good times. Okay, um, the problem is with this reversing system is if I push this button, the lift is going to completely ignore all the limit switches. So I may have to use a different remote and make sure that the buttons do not accidentally get pressed on this thing because if they do, things can break. I mean, there is a clutch on there, but still. So we've got one of the wires disconnected from the motor so it shouldn't be able to move. We're about to power everything up. We've got the controller just laying here. Well, let's do it. Okay, no smoke. It's a good sign. Do we have any lights? Yep, looks like we got a light. Um, now, I just have to remember how to program. Let's see, so... Oh, dang it, I programmed them both on the same one. That's no good. Okay, so A and B are our functions. So now, let me get some clip leads in the multimeter and we're gonna test to see what voltage is going on over here. Okay, we've got our meter connected. All the wires are carefully dangling as to not short everything out. So let's see, when we hit this button, we should get something. Okay, 26 volts positive, and B should be negative. There we go, 26 volts negative. I think we did it. Let me turn this off before we forget. But uh, I think we're successful. Wait, do I have the lid for that thing out here? Dang it, I don't. I need the lid for that box. I think it's, is it in there? Can you tell me? Oh, yep. There it is. It's right there. Dang. Um, eh, whatever. Okay, I just thought of something. By the way, I got the programming taken care of. Um, I guess I could use this same remote. Actually, no, that won't work because I'm still gonna need this one to get the lift to the proper level before I use this one. But I was thinking I could install a lockout based on the micro switches so that this thing doesn't power up until then. Eh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna fire up the lift. That's gonna stay disconnected just long enough to grab the stuff I need in there. And then we're gonna get this thing remounted right here where it goes. 
<laughs> exciting stuff. Okay, I grabbed the lid for the box. I haven't installed it yet, but I just realized there's one more thing we need to test. So I pulled the relays out of the lift controller that allows it to go in and out. And also that motor is currently disconnected. What I wanna find out is if the lift will still automatically get to the right height and level itself for stowing and deploying. I think that's this button. It should go up and stop. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna hold this button just for a second and make sure we don't get smoke coming out. I do hear another relay in there, but I think that's the one that activates power for things. So, hang on, let me think about this for a minute. So that was isolated by the relays. I think we're good. I do have fuses everywhere, so if something bad happens, it should pop. Well, this button should also not do anything. Okay, seems good. Let's go back down. Okay, um, I'm gonna pull the controller back out. We're gonna get the lid on, get everything all tied up because it has to fit in this little space right here. This is the top and the very bottom it can be is down here by my fingers. So we need to get all this stuff tied up extremely well so that nothing drags as this is sliding in and out six feet. Okay, our controller's mounted. Let's check our clearance. Um, looks like we're hanging down just a little bit here. Uh, yeah, see how that's hanging down? I'm gonna have to reroute these wires so they're not sticking up like that. Otherwise, as soon as that goes in, it's gonna mangle everything bad. Okay, back out it comes. Okay, not only does it work, it works significantly better than it did before. I am noticing though, I think the controller might have had a soft start or something like that because it seems to start and stop a lot more abruptly when you let go of the button. Before, it would kind of glide to a stop. All right, well, I'm going to think about order of operations and figuring out the best way to get these pile of remotes set up. But for now, it works. <laughs> Okay, so right here is where I stopped filming the lift project. It's one of those things that I just needed to get done. And it was three hours, actually more than that, of drawing up schematics, wiring things, pulling relays, checking traces on boards, probing out stuff with meters, and making double and triple sure that applying power to the circuits I was adding wasn't going to fry something. So anyways, got that done. So let's skip on to the next day. I uh, went to meet up with a group of friends and we always do interesting, strange things. This time we went on a rampage with a scissor lift. <laughs> I, I know, random, right? It's just about the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Well, the project for today is picking up a giant scissor lift. And we're gonna try and fit it in the back of this trailer. We may have to remove some of the uh, railings and stuff on it, but uh, yeah, should be entertaining. Oh, did this one drive on the street? Yeah. <laughs> Off-roading. Oh, free tire drift. <laughs> Is this one not good enough? Apparently not. Yeah, I think it's just the front ones. I don't see any hub motors back here. <laughs> forklift pockets? What are we doing? We should have used the forklift. <laughs> oh, there's so much dirt flying off of that. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Is that full throttle? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Oh, do we want to back it in since apparently it's front wheel drive? Those those front tires are like spinning. I don't know if we'll get traction going up the ramp if we do it the way it is. Yeah, 
just this one here. This one. So like that, that. I don't think that's anything. Oh, is there a red bar there? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's another one there. So that's and then the sides don't look like they have anything. And then there's one up front. Yeah, we, we can just pull these pins and then uh, stick a, a twig or something yeah, through the end of the cable. Down. Make sure we're already yeah, down all the way. Yeah, hey, I got the uh, six volt turgeons in there. Those are not cheap. Anyone bring a tape measure? <laughs> I know those are fighting words. <laughs> going to help the oh yeah. Yeah, that's easy. Twin turbos. There he goes. Bye, buddy. <laughs> huh, Our big weird. Mike Pagaris. Do we want, it would be easier, Dan, to steer with the steer tires up front or just go oh, for it? Really? I think when we, well, I think when we start going up, they're just gonna spin and spit the boards out. Okay. Because when you go up the hill, there's no weight on them okay. since it's only that way drive, you know? Okay, right, oh yeah, okay. Because just driving over here, the front tires are spinning on the concrete. I mean, it can be crooked in there just as long as it's on the boards. You board up nicely and then I can get on those. How about just using the jack? This thing weighs a lot. I think it wrecks up the jack. You can pick up the F-350. I don't know. I mean, whatever. It just seems like a rodeo trying to drive that in there. Well, we got the scissor lift all loaded up in the trailer. And, uh, yeah. So that's the thing. <laughs> Sunday afternoon. It's never bad. Apparently I fat fingered my phone, um, and I didn't record that. I, uh, I just got a uh, FedEx delivery from someone and opened it up. Inside, we had some BRC coffee, vintage roast. I've actually never tried these guys, oddly enough. So it'll be cool to give this a shot. Medium roast. Coffee saves takes you from the mundane to the amazing. What is coffee saves? Anyways, thank you for the coffee. And we also got a shirt. This one's pretty good. I'm definitely going to have to wear this in the summer months when I don't have a hoodie on. <laughs> That's great. And it's a size that fits. <laughs> so uh, it didn't say on the package who the stuff came from. So thank you, whoever sent that. And uh, then I was rambling on about how I kind of like this van. It's raining outside, but with the ramp, as opposed to a lift, you just open the door and get right out and you don't have to sit in the rain while the hydraulics go up and down. I, uh, I'm not a huge fan of smaller vehicles, but... I know that this particular conversion, this brand of Dodge van, the conversions are kind of built like a tank. So that's something. I miss sitting about two feet higher than I am right now. But, uh, you know, for the, well, it says 17 miles of the gallon right now. It said 22 the other day. Of course, I did change the oil and do a bunch of stuff. But, yeah, it's kind of nice just being able to get in and out in the rain and not worry about stuff. Anyways, um, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my ice, my crash-cooled iced coffee here at McDonald's. And then... Uh, I think I had some more running around to do. I'll have to look at my list and see. But anyways, on to whatever's next. Okay, so we are going to try this stuff. Never had it before. I think it should be pretty good from what I'm hearing. But we're going to try it with a traditional coffee maker. And then also I'm going to cold brew it. But since I have this thing here right now, we might as well just make some hot coffee. And I've got one of these little things to put in here. So let's see how it goes. Just filled the cup maybe about halfway with water because that's not quite enough grinds to get a full 16 or 18 ounces or however big this mug is. So it smells just like coffee, 
Well, like I said before, it's hard to tell sometimes how coffee is going to taste based on its smell. Oh, these have these little plastic hinges. I had a much better set of these a long time ago that actually had a hinge, but I guess these things are probably disposable. You can only open and close them so many times before they uh, before they stop deciding to work, but uh, what do you expect, I guess? Okay, let's see how this works. So this goes in here, close the lid, turn the dial, put the cup here, then I push this button over here, make sure the light came on. Hey, it looks like the coffee maker's on. And there we go, we have coffee. I'm probably gonna stick an ice cube in there just cause I know it's too hot and I always wind up burning my mouth on stuff. Okay, worst lighting conditions possible, all the lights right behind me. Well, let's try this stuff out and see how it is. I, I haven't put, I haven't put anything in it yet. Yeah, that's well, actually really good. Could be a little bit stronger, but that little pod thing I had wasn't very big. Cool, um, well, yeah, thanks for the coffee. I'm going to throw the rest of this, I think, into the cold brewer. And with the coarse grind that it is, I think uh, it should work pretty well. Which leads me to the next part of this video. I was gonna try and publish this video yesterday, but there's a delivery that didn't show up. So you may notice this is not a disposable coffee cup and there's other, you know, random dishes and tongs and other food preparing stuff in here that needs to be cleaned. Well, I don't have running water in here just yet. And I don't want to spend too much time and energy uh, investing into temporary solutions. So I went on eBay and I bought one of those portable dishwasher things it operates two ways. It has a tank in it so you can dump in water and you can also hook it directly to a faucet. So it'll work good now for cleaning up cooking stuff. And then also later on when I actually have plumbing in here, we can plumb it straight in. So waiting for that to be delivered. It's supposed to be before two o'clock, which is in a half hour, but we're gonna go pick that thing up, set it up and I'm gonna show it to you. And it was kind of expensive. It was like 360 bucks and then I got a three year warranty and shipping and all the stuff. So it was basically $400 for this thing. But like I said, I haven't been eating like I should or enough rather because the cleanup after cooking is such a pain. So anyways, let's go grab this thing and uh, see how it works. Okay, um, apparently my uh, dishwasher delivery is not gonna be here today. I don't know what the deal is with FedEx. I've used them three times in the last six months and every single time it, there's been issues with them saying, oh yeah, well, it's gonna be here early. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Doesn't show up. They don't update the tracking information. Then the next day it's like, oh yeah, it'll definitely be here today. And I call them, yeah, we've committed to deliver it today. And then the delivery window passes, doesn't show up. So I called them again today and they're like, oh yeah, it'll be here tomorrow. So. I don't, I don't know what the, what the deal is. I mean, obviously whatever, not the end of the world, but FedEx seemed like they used to be a good delivery company and I'm having it delivered to a, like an area that's inside Portland proper in a location that gets dozens of FedEx deliveries every day, but their tracking doesn't work. The, it doesn't update. I tried to get the text updates, doesn't work. Emails don't work. I call them and they're like, oh yeah, well, this is the most up-to-date information we have. So anyways, whatever. Um, it's just a dishwasher. I was just, I didn't have anything else filmed for the rest of this video and I was going to use that, but whatever. So all that being said, it's um, somewhat sunny outside at the moment. So I think at this point, what I should do, because... I was kind of planning the rest of my day around driving all the way over there and picking it up is we should go to Goodwill or maybe a couple of them. There's a new one that's opened up and I kind of want to check that out. Usually the new stores, they, they direct some of their better, cheaper merchandise to them for the first month or so. I don't need any more stuff, but at this point, I just don't know what else to do with myself. And sometimes you just get in the van and drive around for no reason. Oh, and tomorrow, of course, the day that they say they're going to be delivering that package, I'm taking the new van in to get the front brakes completely redone on it. New discs, pads, calipers, flush on the lines, all that stuff. 
So I guarantee you, the second I get to the shop and they get it all taken apart, I'm going to get a notification saying, oh, it's been delivered. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. Um, I think we should have the van done tomorrow. I'm just going to have to hang out at the shop probably three, four hours or whatever. Anyways, um, let's take advantage of the sunshine and uh, go check out some Goodwill. Goodwill? Plural? I don't know. Whatever. Let's go somewhere. And by the way, I just want to say, because it sounds like I'm complaining and I guess technically I kind of am, there's some sort of, um, uh, how do you phrase it? Sometimes it's nice when you're in a living situation where everything becomes difficult and the whole wheelchair life is annoying and all that. Sometimes there is comfort in uh, getting annoyed by little things that have no bearing on anything whatsoever in life in general. It's like, yeah, okay, my dishwasher's not getting here. Whatever, it's annoying. But I don't know. There, there's something to sometimes uh, just complaining about little trivial meaningless things not in a way that gets annoying and not constantly, but I don't know. Just to me, I, I like I like simple problems. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I'm, I'm sure a number of you know what I'm talking about there. Okay, so a little bit of an update on the uh, lift repair here. The way I've got things set up right now, I'm using two different remotes. Before, this one would control all the functions on the lift. I've figured out the way I'm gonna finally set everything up. For right now, I've got the stow and deploy remote right here. And I've just got this hanging here on the inside so I don't lose it. I don't want to accidentally push the wrong button on this so I'm not carrying it around on the lanyard around my neck with all the other remotes. So let's go ahead and deploy it for right now. Okay, so once that thing's out, uh, you can just use this remote to raise and lower it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program this button here so that it will at least make the lift come out. That way when I want to, well, that way when the lift is completely inside and I'm outside and I want to get in or I'm inside and I want to get out, I can just use a single remote for that. It does have a clutch on it. So if for whatever reason, like say I hit this button again to deploy it, it doesn't actually hurt anything. It seems to be working good. It's been super reliable. Uh, the only problem is with programming this button, I'm going to have to unbind the, uh, the remote from this thing, which involves taking that apart, erasing all the codes, programming them again. And then I've got to get outside, pull the lift controller apart, take the lid off of that, and then program one additional button. So I'm feeling exquisitely lazy as per usual, so I won't, probably won't be doing that anytime soon. But for now, to solve the problems, I can grab this and pull it outside. I can reach this just fine when I'm sitting outside and it's right here. Don't have to worry about sitting on it. Because for example, sometimes when I lean over, my chest will get the remotes trapped between my leg and I will hit buttons mistakenly. And I'm just trying to avoid that. Anyways, uh, goodwill. Yay. It's my happy place. And I just remembered I forgot to grab something inside. But once again, another reason I have the world's longest grabber stick sitting right here. This is one of those ones that's so long that you almost can't use it because when you pick something up, your arms aren't long enough to grab what you need. But anyways, I keep that right here by the door for this exact reason. Oh, a little bit wet. Didn't take that with enough speed. This van does have a kneeling system on it, but I don't know how compatible it is with the, with the aftermarket air shocks that are on here. So I will be eventually getting that compressor controller installed. That way I'll have buttons here on the dashboard to inflate and deflate the rear airbags. Also, because this is a 20 year old Chrysler, uh, I like to warm these up just a little bit to get some heat into the transmission before I drive. So we're gonna fire this up and let it run for a minute. I gotta go uh, talk to someone real quick and then uh, we will get going. Oh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> Anyways, um, I haven't gotten a camera mount set up in this van yet. I've got a couple of different brackety things ordered that should be delivered tomorrow. I'm I'm not sure if I'm, gonna, I don't think I'm gonna mount it on the windshield because my line of sight is like right along the top of the roof on this. I actually had to remove the sun visor on this side because I'm really tall. <laughs> Anyways, enough rambling. Let's, uh, let's go to Goodwill and see if there's some stuff that we don't need to buy and then not buy it. <laughs> And here we go, amidst uh, looming rain clouds, it's a brand new Goodwill, hey! Wow, they even painted no parking on the uh, loading zone area. Fancy.
This store is a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. Okay, I think I wound up staying in that store a little bit too long. You would think that with it being a brand new store, they'd use LED lighting, but they still have the old long tube fluorescence in there. Anyways, apparently I bought a TV. It's in the back. It started pouring rain the second I came outside. And after I got loaded in here, it quit raining, of course. Okay, there was this little wireless charging stand in there. It's an older one powered with micro USB, but there were no USB power supplies anywhere in the store. I looked everywhere. So then I started searching for other devices that had USB ports on them. And there was one fairly recent uh, TP-Link router that had a USB 3.0 port on it. So I plugged that in and let it boot up and I was able to test this thing to make sure it works. Um, did I just say the price? It says $7, but it was half price. So anyways, TV and that thing. Um, yeah. I think the purchase of the TV was maybe influenced by the fluorescent lighting in there. Um, the TV is the perfect size, though, and it's a nice Sony Bravia one. So, I don't know. Whatever. Um, I'm not sure where I'm headed next. I got a few texts I got to respond to, and then we'll figure that out. Okay, so, I think I'm going to be going to visit a friend. I would prefer to go back and edit this video right now, but a friend's in from out of state that I don't get to see very often. So I think I'm gonna go grab dinner with them and then I'll go back and work on this video. I've got it mostly edited already, so um, shouldn't take too long, but it'll be another uh, middle of the night upload. Like I always say, subscribe, actually I've never said this, but <laughs> subscribe if you want, but don't turn on notifications unless you want your phone to beep at you in the middle of the night, because that's usually when I publish videos. Uh, okay, so it's been a little while and we're back here in the bus, obviously. Here's the little TV I got. I'm not sure what size it is, but as you can see, it's uh, let's get a wide angle here. As you can see, it's a pretty decent size for in here. I've actually got a TV mount set up right here on this upright between the windows behind the curtains. I think I've got the mount out at the warehouse. I need to find it. But anyways, that thing is going to go right here, basically. And I can point it back this way to where my bed is, or I can face it up that way if I'm sitting up there or something. But one thing I've been missing, when I try to go to sleep at night, I have a hard time shutting off my brain and also tinnitus and some other things. So I found it's really helpful to put on some technical videos or like, uh, re well, not Rebuild Rescue, what's that channel called? Hand Tool Rescue. He doesn't really talk much, he just works on things. So anyways, TV, finally got that in here. Um, yeah, we'll get it mounted to the wall, but for now it can just sit on this little thing. Oh, and this was, how much was it? I'm actually not sure where the price tag went. I think it was 25 bucks, but it's one of the nice Sony Bravias. It's from 2009 and it doesn't have a remote. And I also figured out why it was at Goodwill. So this is the Chromecast uh, with Google TV or something. Anyways, it's got an IR blaster on it. It'll control anything that's infrared. The infrared receiver on this TV does not work. So I'm pretty sure that's why it was a Goodwill. I tried a, uh, another device, like a Universal uh, Logitech Harmony, that was it. I tried one of those out. Those will control like toaster ovens, space heater, ceiling fans. If it has an IR blaster, it can control it. So pretty sure that's why it's a Goodwill. But that's fine because I can turn it off using the Chromecast remote, using CEZ control, but also the volume control can work through the Chromecast as well. So I can turn it up and down using that. So, whatever. By the way, DeVos Garage, I don't know if you've ever watched this guy. He's in the middle of uh, rebuilding a great big uh, semi-truck right now. Anyways, there you go. Hey Rich, this, this is gonna drop when you... Uh... Anyways, we'll call that good for now. Got a few things done over the last couple days. I'm gonna be working on a few more things tomorrow, getting the uh, van brakes taken care of. And uh, yeah, I think this is the end of the video. I'm tired. I'll see you guys Thursday for the live stream. Thanks for watching.